Bill Roggio is the managing editor of the Long War Journal. You should check it out. He joins me now. Um, good to see you again, Bill. I mean, now that the Taliban has taken over, I'm, what are you hearing about localised pushback? Um, you know, what are the odds that opposition could become more organised and perhaps even lead to you know, civil conflict in parts of the country? Hello, Michael. It, it's been a dark week and a dark several months in Afghanistan. But I think we're seeing a small, tiny ray of hope that's emerging from Panjshir province. It's the only province that hasn't been overrun by the Taliban. Um, the son of Ahmed Shah Massoud, who was the famed anti-Taliban leader of the Northern, Northern Alliance, uh, who was killed by al-Qaeda on September 9, 2001. He and uh, Amrullah Saleh, who was one of the vice presidents and former head of the National Directorate of Security, Think of that as Afghanistan's FBI and CIA were all rolled up in one. They're starting to mount some resistance. To, so they held the Panjshir province. That's a, sort of a fortress province in the mountains. And they're taking the fight outside. They took control of four districts, one in a Parwan province, which is where Bagram Air Base. So they're near Bagram Air Base right now. And three in Bagwan province to, to the east and the north and east of it. And I'm hearing rumors that they're moving into Bamiyan province uh, as well. So, you know, there's a lot of questions here. It, it's a long shot. The Taliban is organized. They have a lot of war material. But um, Saleh, you know, he may have been the man Afghanistan needed. Um, I'm, we're hoping it's not too late. Yeah, well, hopefully that, that is a glimmer. I mean, as, as you write in the uh, Long War Journal, I'll just read some of it. You said that the U.S. is fearful of upsetting the Taliban as it evacuates American citizens via Hamid Karzai International Airport. What, what were the mistakes made in terms of even being in this position? As many have said, evacuations of particularly translators and other workers should have started months ago. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, the U.S. policy um, from February 29th, uh, 2020, under the Trump administration, was that we were leaving Afghanistan, and yet nothing was done to prepare for this, to get the individuals out, to scale back the embassy, to get, I'm talking American citizens and Westerners, and then as well as to start getting key Afghan personnel out. And instead, the Biden administration pretended that Afghanistan had a year or two before it would be in trouble. It didn't anticipate, it didn't understand that the Taliban was prepared to take over large parts of the country. And it never implemented, and then it's planned to just hold the embassy and the, and, uh, the airfield in Kabul. This was an absolute mistake. If, if this was happening, you needed to secure big parts yeah. of the city. Yeah, it should, have, should, have, should have happened a long time ago. I, mean, I wanted to ask you this too. The U.S. and others, uh, you know, including the president today, talking about an unwavering commitment to the Afghan people. But is, is that not meaningless? I mean, the Afghan people are, are on their own, basically, aren't they? Yeah, the, there is no unwavering commitment. There's no commitment right now to the Afghan people. Uh, it's a madhouse in Kabul right now. Um, I, you know... President Biden and his team is telling us everything's fine in the airports. Were, but, uh, you know, you know, who are you going to be, believe me uh, or your lying eyes? Yeah. We all know what we're seeing on the television. Yeah, exactly. I, I wanted to ask you this, too. The Taliban have been releasing prisoners all across the country, including accused ISIS fighters as well. Um, how, how soon do you think terror networks, anti-Western jihadis, establish themselves in Afghanistan and begin plotting attacks? And Af Al Qaeda has been established in, Al in Afghanistan. Uh, in 2015, the U.S. raided a lar one of the largest bases it's seen since it launched the war on terror in Kandahar province and killed 150 Al Qaeda operatives. But the release of these prisoners, this is a boon for jihadism. Some of them are Islamic, Islamic State, but most of them are Al Qaeda and affiliated groups. And I'm told that members of, and it makes sense because we know we detain them, but of the external operation cells, these are the ones who plot attacks. The, um, the scores of them have been freed from the prisons in that in Bagram and elsewhere throughout the country. So <clears throat> the Al Qaeda has had its ranks expanded significantly by this ineptitude. Mm. 
I wanted to ask you this too before we go. What, what do you make of the Taliban's taking of massive amounts of US weaponry? I mean, they were releasing photographs uh, today of, of fighters with US M16s, M4s, not to mention uh, driving around in US Humvees and even MRAPs. Quite apart from the embarrassing optics, it gives them a lot of firepower they didn't have before. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we're just seeing a small fraction of this. I've seen video after video. So they overran all of the Afghan military's bases, their army corps headquarters and large military and training bases. And in these videos, you'll just see it panning over fields of Humvees or armored vehicles, fuel trucks, sometimes tanks, artillery pieces. And I've even seen Taliban flying helicopters. The more advanced weaponry is going to be more difficult to keep in the air over time. It'll degrade quickly, the maintenance and uh, issues like that. But these Humvees and trucks and, and armored vehicles significantly increases the Taliban's combat power. It's a big problem. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, what a mess, as we've been saying. Uh, Bill Roggio, yeah. uh, got to leave it there. Really appreciate it, as always. Thank you for having me on, Michael. Have a great night.